Hey, Alan here for Old English Outfitters. You know, if you're familiar with small arms, one of the things that you hear talked about in small arms are rifles called bull pups. Uh, we took a look at the X95 Tavor out of Israel, which is a bullpup rifle. Bullpups, of course, take the mechanism and they reverse everything. The trigger group is in front of the action rather than behind the action. That has the enormous advantage of taking the whole rifle and bringing it down to a very small size, like about that. And what we have in here today is the very first one that we've seen, the new Springfield Hellion. The Hellion is a bullpup rifle. It is based upon the Croatian VHS, which has been in use by the Croatian military for a little while now. They've got a couple of upgrades to it that they've done. The Hellion is not exactly that rifle, but it is based upon that rifle. It has the essential basic mechanism and functions of that rifle, but it's been Americanized a little bit for a couple reasons. For one thing, some of what they've done to it makes it just a little nicer for us American users. And uh, some of what they've done to it is so that it can everything can be uh, legal and copacetic here in the good old U.S. of A. Very interesting rifle. It is a bull pup, so the action is all back here, the trigger group's up here, and you end up with a full carbine length barrel, 16 inches, from here to all the way back there in a very small, compact package. There's a few bull pups around the world. Modern uh, militaries like them because modern infantry finds itself riding in vehicles a lot. And something that's small like this is much easier to get in and out of a vehicle than say, oh, an M14 or an L1A1 or something like that, right? The Hellion, designed by the Croatians over in uh, Croatia, H HS Product is the company that manufactures this. Same group that manufactures the XD series guns for Springfield Armory. Uh, has some interesting features. Uh, starting on the top here, we've got a full-length Picatinny rail. We've got some very good, very robust iron sights. Now, these sights will fold down. They are completely, this one's adjustable for elevation correction, up and down. Rear is adjustable for windage correction, left, right. These are strong enough to be used as primary sights if you want to. The rear sight is kind of a diopter, so it's actually got a little dial in here so you can change the aperture size. You can go from a ghost ring to something much smaller for a little more precision shot. Very interesting. They fold down and literally disappear right into the profile of that full-length Picatinny rail. Now rifles like this are designed primarily to use with some sort of optical sight up here, electronic, tri tritium, or otherwise. We used a uh, Holosun on this one made a very good platform for this. Bull pups like AR-15s, very flat, so you need sights need to be up in the air just a little bit in order to get a cheek weld. And this rifle has a cheek piece back here that helps you get that cheek weld. Going back to the front for a minute, we have a three-prong flash suppressor, actually four-prong flash suppressor up here. It is open on the front. We've got an adjustable gas system. This is a piston-operated weapon, so it's not direct impingement like an AR. Inside here we have the, car the uh, charging handle, and the charging handle is very interesting because it pivots either right or left. So this rifle can be operated by a righty or lefty by just reaching in there and pulling at the charging handle. Not too hard to get to. You just reach right in, pull it, rack it open, there you go. It snaps back, which is kind of nice because it keeps this whole side of the gun nice and slick and clean. Moving backwards. We have, back here by the ejection port, we have a dust cover, which locks shut, just like it does on AR-15 type weapons. Very nice, keeps crud out of the action, pops open automatically when the bolt cycles. The safety here is ambidextrous, it's on both sides, and it's shaped very differently than a lot of these things are. If you've ever used an ambidextrous safety on a gun like this, sometimes what you'll notice is when you, you're right-handed or left, doesn't matter, when you kick one side off, the other side kind of comes down and digs into your finger. So you kind of have to adjust for that just a little bit. This safety is canted up in the air. You can see it there. So what happens is when you, when you kick it off, the, uh, the off side doesn't get close to your finger, doesn't gouge it, stays away from it. It's kind of cool. The trade-off is, it's jacked up in the air. So you have to reach further to get to it. For a firing grip here, if I'm gonna, well, let me change it around so you can see it better. For a firing grip here, I have to reach all, I have to, I have to reach all the way up here. Now it's really not too bad. 
it's not a terribly long reach. I don't have great big hands. Somebody with big hands, this would be no problem at all for. So it's interesting how they thought about that, of keeping this out of the other hand was still making it usable, which it is. The trigger, like triggers on all bull pups, because the firing mechanism is up here and the, 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 uh, uh, the bolt mechanism and all that is back here, you've got a linkage that has to connect those two things. So it doesn't have a nice crisp break. It's more of a rolling break, kind of similar to an AK. Reset on this is not bad. It's, you don't have to come all the way out on it. Not bad. You can crank rounds out of it pretty quickly when you want to, once you figure the trigger out. The uh, side of it also has sling swivel points. We got quick detach there and up here at the front and also here. So you can quick detach for a single point setup. You can quick detach for standard two point, whatever you want there. The magazine well on this is different than the military version of this gun. Wisely, Springfield chose to do a couple things with the bottom part of this. They put the uh, same pistol grip that they put on the Saint pistols. This is a Bravo Company product. So you've got battery storage or whatever in the bottom of that. So it's a little different pistol grip, but then the magazine well itself is adapted for NATO standard magazines. Comes with a PMAG. So PMAGs, NATO standard magazines will work in this. That's a very good thing because there's lots of those around here, as we know. The buttstock. Most bull pups don't adjust for length of pull. This one does. Only one in the world that I know of that does. Right here, if we push this, we can take that all the way out. Or, like AR patterns, we can go in a couple spots. Or we can go all the way in and latch it shut. So, if you're a great big tall guy, you got big long arms, you can run that all the way out. For me, that ain't gonna work. That does. So there's a lot of flexibility there. That's a good thing. Uh, only bullpup, like I said, and I know that in the world it does that. So very interesting. You can you can make it longer if you got big long arms and you need that extra length. The uh, magazine well is how you would manually lock the bolt open. So if we jack this open for a second, it does lock open on the empty magazine. To manually lock it open, you pull the bolt all the way back put your finger up inside the mag well and there's a little piece in there that you can feel it moves. You just push it and that latches it in position. You can run the charging handle back up, put it where it is. If you want to close the bolt from back here, you got a latch right there that does that. The magazine release is a paddle on the back. The mags don't fall right out like AR pattern guts. We're used to reaching out, punching the magazine release, out goes the magazine. This one you've kind of got to reach back and grab it and pull it out. Not a huge deal once you've worked with it a little bit. Not a problem to do, uh, just different than what sometimes we're used to. Another interesting thing about this gun that Springfield did, besides making it adaptable to Stanag magazines and NATO standard that is, and the better pistol grip, is they put a fore end up here that is M-Lock compatible. So you can put a fore grip up here, lights, lasers, whatever you want. Also, we've got a couple of small pieces up here. These will turn. These are designed for, uh, again, sling swivel that you got a snap hook on. You can put those up there if you want to. So this thing is really filled with a lot of features, and it has another very interesting feature. You can convert it completely to left-handed configuration. You can't. You don't have to send it back to anybody to do it. Manual has full instructions on how you do that. So if you're left-handed, you can swap everything over so the ejection port runs off the other side of the gun. The rest of the controls, the charging handle and the safety are completely ambidextrous, so no problem there. Very interesting. If you're right-handed and you find occasion to shoot from the left shoulder, it does have a shell deflector over here, so it will keep things from hitting, ejecting rounds from hitting in the face. Really interesting gun. Comfortable to shoot, as you would expect it would be. Bull pups are not lightweight. It, you pick up an AR, especially like an AR pistol, they're fairly lightweight. These things aren't necessarily, but the weight's all in the back of the gun. So they're just different than what we're used to sometimes. They're very interesting to play with and learn because they're so short. You get rifle performance, rifle length barrel out of something that's the size of, a, of an AR pistol. So gives you some huge advantages in that regard. Takedown is a little different. Uh, it's a little kind of a two-step thing from what I've read. You, uh, the buttstock uh, releases, comes back, comes off, and then you gotta pull out, you gotta cycle the bolt and pull out the bolt and the carrier. 
We're not going to take it apart here because we don't have time. But uh, anyway, uh, very interesting rifle. Uh, very comfortable to shoot. Lots of fun to shoot. Bull pups are fun to shoot. Uh, the cheek piece here, I, me personally, I would like that cheek piece to be configured just a little bit differently, but I'm okay with it, and most people probably will be. These guns are built with all this Picatinny rail real estate to have some kind of sight up here, and that's where they're probably going to be most effective. The irons on this, while they're perfectly usable and very robust, probably more of a backup uh, sight system than they are a primary system, although they are, you can zero them right up fully adjustable both directions so pretty cool uh, I don't have a price on this gun yet this is the first one we've seen but uh, they're gonna be they're gonna be in the same general price range as a lot of other weapons of this type so you're probably somewhere in that 17 18 range something like that call and check with us for price and availability these things are a little hard to come by as we film this hopefully that will improve so there we are, the Hellion from Springfield Armory. Very interesting rifle. If you like bull pups, this is going to be worth taking a hard look at and a hard study of. Well, that's what we have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Alan for Old English Outfitters.